Hey guys, in this section we'll be going through installing Redis server and, and then a Redis browser so we can actually access our installed instance online. And if you have watched our previous videos, you might have seen our entire process of creating server, connecting with Zoom admin, you know, installing MySQL, PHP, my admin, a couple of WordPress sites, mapping domains. So if you have not watched those videos, go back and watch those videos first if, if you have a need for it. But basically, we want to install Redis and then use Redis as a caching mechanism for WordPress. Now, in your instance, you might be using Redis for something else. That's okay too. This video goes to installing Redis and, and making sure it's working with our Redis browser. So, after you have your machines connected, right? In our case, we have server one. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that as you're you know, adding more uh, applications, you will start kind of, because we got the cheapest server, $5 server, right? And MySQL usually takes a lot, a lot of uh, memory, and which is why you can tell it's it's at 82 percent now. At some point, it will stop letting you creating more apps because if you try to create too many apps, you might um, crash the server. So I think after you reach like 85 percent, it will it would you know Zoom admin will not allow you to add more applications until you fix the memory issue. Now, let's go ahead and create Redis and see if we have enough memory for it. Um, I have not tried this before, so maybe it doesn't work, but we'll see now. So, you know, click on create and then you can come here, down, come down here, click on browse more, find Redis, and then select OK. Let's make sure it's selected. I'm gonna call it Redis 1, and then click on continue. Uh, and then I want to deploy it to my uh, server one and then so one other thing I want to check make sure that uh, I believe there's a way um, to set a password but maybe it's being done first time you log in I can't it's been a while since I've done this so uh, let's go ahead and try I thought it would have a default password setting but maybe not we'll, we'll see so I'm gonna go ahead and deploy the way it is I think by default Redis doesn't have a password and if you want you can set one. So I'm going to create the second application here and it's called you know Redis Commander which is also known as uh, basically like PHP admin type of mechanism for Redis server. You'll be able to log in and see your objects things like that so I'm going to install that as well. It's like a Redis client. right? Um, gonna call it Redis client so it makes sense for me um, and then hit on continue and I'm gonna publish to our server one here again assuming I have enough memory which we'll see because it's gonna complain if we don't so Redis is now alive uh, because it doesn't have by default the web interface it just has a um, you know, port number that it gives you the Redis container uh, hostname, which is the name of the application you gave it. So, it, it, so technically, just like our MySQL, you should be able to access using the port number, um, IP, and the port number. Or if it's if you're trying to install the client on a on a different server, or you are using some other client locally. You can use uh, the port number and, and the um, public IP, or if it's local, you can always use the container name, right? Redis one. So let's see if our um, Redis client is up. Looks like it's up. So let's try to go to it, and it's gonna ask you to log in. So I, I believe the username is root and password. I think there's no password. Let's let's try to log in now. Um, maybe admin. Okay, so it did not work. So let's let's look into something here. I think this is not the Redis password. This is the login for Redis Commander. I think by default it has a its own login. So if we go back to our applications here, let's edit Redis Commander over the client. 
Um, if you look at the show advanced settings, environment settings, you can see um, the admin user and password. We can change this by the way as well. So I'm gonna just copy it here just so I, I have it. Okay. And now if we go back here, I can, I can see if this works. Again, this is just to log in into the commander client. It's not really logging into your um, Redis client. Now, by default, it's going to try to connect the local host, but it's not going to work because our, our Redis is not installed on local host, right? So we need to um, create a new, other new server. So add, add new server. And as I explained, there's two ways, right? Either we're using the IP and port or the container name because it's installed on the same server. This time we can use the container name, let's say, <coughs> sorry, Redis1 uh, as the display name and the host name is Redis1. And again, by default, there is no password. I think this should hopefully work. Let's see. Okay. So that worked. I think this one we have to somehow delete if it, I think the, the issue is I think with this um commander it doesn't allow you to easily delete because we want to basically delete the default one um i'll disconnect maybe this is there you go that worked so we want to disconnect the default one and only keep our redis one and as you can tell, we are able to um, connect to our Redis server. You can add a key here. Again, this is a UI for it. Um, and that worked, I believe. So the other thing, you can refresh here and then you'll see your key here, right? Uh, you can also, I believe, set a password if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Let's see if it, so there's an easy way which uh, again I wasn't gonna cover but I think it's quick enough that I can show you so let me bring up here in the next sections in one of the final sections we'll be covering how you connect um, SFTP into your server using Visual Studio Code it's in our list of sections to cover but quickly I'll show you this section here before and then I'll show you how you set this up in that section but, but basically, once you configure Visual Studio Code to connect into your server, as you can tell, I'm connected now to my server, and these are all the apps that we created. And one thing that you will see, most apps will have uh, one of these folders, you know, coming from the container. So it's a way it basically maps to this folder from inside the container. And also a config file, right? So for MySQL, it has all the config files for MySQL. But anyway, let, let's cover Redis real quickly. Um, so for our Redis, we have our data, right? So in case if you uh, restart your container, or whatever, it doesn't go away. We have mapped it automatically for you. But we have this. We've also mapped our config file here. So if you go into this config file and if you search for password, pass. Is this section here that says require pass and if you uncomment that and here just set whatever password you want you know make it a strong password and then do control s to save it now one other thing you have to do is restart this container so just have to type in here docker restart where this one okay so it's been restarted and give you quick hints on how to show existing Docker containers. Do Docker PS show you all the containers running on the system. But anyway, now that the password is set, you save this somewhere. All right, let's put this in our um, notepad here. Okay, so now if we go back to our Redis uh, client, we can find it. If I refresh here, technically it's gonna say it's can't, it can't connect anymore. Um, 
And I don't know if I can edit an other password, so I'm just gonna disconnect and then connect a new one. Add server. Redis one. This is my Redis one as well. Um, and the password now that we have set a password for it is this one here. Okay, and then connect. As you can tell, now we have um, set a password for our Redis server so that you don't have to mess with firewall rules if, if you don't want to. So that's how you set a password for Redis using its own config file. Uh, and that's it for this section. Thanks for watching. See you in the next section.